Hey, believe it or not, it's Monday night, and Yay. it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop with new gear and new a new studio. No, it's the same old studio, but a new gear, and uh, our guest tonight is Keith Farley. In the house. In the house. He will be here talking to us about directing and taking direction and making characters and lots of other cool stuff, too. Stuff voice stuff actors about. really need to listen to. Yeah, I mean, really just tune right in. Yeah. Plus, we're going to talk about sibilance tonight Ooh, boy and you've got uh, a tech update sure well, we'll find something all right come on up now on voiceover body shop two men twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere together in one place George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VOBS. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Whew. again, Monday night comes upon us, and yes, it's it time is. to do our show once again to talk about voiceover, home studios, the techniques involved in being great at voiceover and making the most of your voiceover career. That's as right. that intro says, every week. That's right. We want the technology to be a part of your life, but not control the way you work, the way you act. We want you to be able to act and the technology sort of fade into the background. Right. Hopefully that's what we're... Hit record and go, like on a cassette player. You know, like bring... Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Well, tonight Keith Farley is our guest and we're going to talk about acting and voice acting and how to take direction and the casting process and all sorts of cool stuff. And his new cool studio. Yes. Which I know somebody had something to do with. <laughs> I wonder who. Uh, and uh, and also we're going to talk about sibilance tonight mm -hmm. because there was a discussion on that. Okay. All right. So Great. let's get the show on the road. It's now time for... Voice of the Show presents the B.O.B.S. Voice over extra news. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. All righty, here is the voiceover extra news for May 7th, 2018. APAC Audis Week Preview with Conference Advice. Well, the merry month of May opens with congratulations to outstanding voice talents across the pond in London. Recently, winners were announced and honored in a ceremony for the first one voice awards presented by Gravy for the Brain. Among the 32 winners who were declared the best in the UK voiceovers were Toby Ricketts uh, as male voiceover of the year and Alexia Cambu as female voiceover of the year. You can read all about the new awards ceremony and see all the winners in an article now at voiceoverextra.com. And drumroll, coming tomorrow on VoiceOver Extra is our preview of APAC, Audis Week in New York City. Hmm. 
If you're an audiobook narrator or a wannabe, New York is where you want to be every year in the last week of May. That's when APAC, or the Audio Publishers Annual Conference, comes to the Javits Convention Center, bringing narrators and publishers together in a day of networking and even in a sort of round of auditions known as speed dating. Unfortunately, if you don't already have tickets for this year's event, well, <laughs> you're too late. It's been sold out for quite a while. Also late in May is the audio publisher group's Glamorous Outies Gala, where winners of the covered, uh, coveted audio awards for audiobook excellence will be announced and honored. My gosh, at nearly $500 per ticket, even the gala is sold out. Figure that one out. But take heart, there's plenty of other activities that week, including networking, socials, parties, and outside training opportunities with popular narrator and coach Johnny Heller that Tom details in that article. And look, there's more. Mm. In this year's feature, Tom slips in interviews and a, with veteran APAC goers who give advice on how to max the benefit of attending this conference or any business conference for that matter. For instance, narrator Adam Werner, oh, I've met Adam, he we lives up Adam. in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, he observes that you can be a, either a shark or a manatee. Sharks, he says, are always on the prowl, looking for the next important person on their list to talk to. Sound right? Well, not really, Adam says. Sharks are always looking over their shoulder, narrowing their eyes to scan name tags. They're never really with you. Mm. So Adam advises being a manatee. Really? Move slowly, taking delight in whatever happens, and develop meaningful relationships. Next in the crowd, we find Megan Tunsing, who has a one-word tip. Listen. Ask questions and then listen to the story, she says. You'll learn how to grow your business as well as forge long-lasting friendships. And there's no way to miss Johnny Heller at APAC, or any of the parties for that matter. About APAC, Johnny says, there's no other time or place where you have so many actors and producers gathered at one place at one time. So what does he advise for networking? I suggest you stand next to Sean Allen Pratt, an acclaimed narrator and coach. And when someone you want to meet comes by, give Sean a meaningful look and wiggle your eyebrows, indicating you want to meet that person. Sean will either introduce you or he will get nervous about your suspicious behavior and give you five bucks to stand somewhere else. Okay, Johnny, Sean's been warned. <laughs> Check out these articles and hundreds more at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. <laughs> I love a cold read. Yes. It's much more exciting that way. Yes, right out of the refrigerator <laughs> and into our mouths. But anyway. So, Sounds interesting. And yeah. People ask every year, hey, are you going to APAC? And I'm like, well, you know, maybe one of these years I'll go. I, they're like, oh, there's so many people that would know you there. I'm like, well, maybe that's why I don't need to go. When I don't they, know. I'm just saying. I, when they invite us. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's when there's an APAC in Los Angeles. Maybe then we'll I'm go. there. Yeah. I just missed the World Radio. What is it called? The World Radio Conference? It just happened. Is that right? The I think that's what it's called. Worldwide Radio Conference? Something like that. Oh. That just happened here in L.A. last week. There's and always I, something going and on. And I got here. the same thing. Hey, did you go? Why weren't you there? I'm like, I, I don't know. It wasn't on my radar, man. I don't no. know. I think God. the Adult Entertainment Expo is this week. Yeah, I will not Not that. that I was planning on going. Not that I know from personal experience. Anyway, what's up in tech this week? Well, it seems like in the discussions lately, uh, one of the things that came up is um, uh, the USB microphones, namely the Apogee mic. There's a new version of it. We, we saw it at NAMM. The Apogee Mic Plus. And uh, I think Jeff Berlin is the name. Yeah, Jeff Berlin. He did a test where he compared the uh, the Apogee Mic Plus recording into his Android tablet or Android phone. I don't remember which one it was. Um, that's, you know, USB directly into the phone, basically. Uh, he, re he compared using that to recording through his usual portable rig using a 416 shotgun mic into his audience or whatever it is into a into his desktop and at the end of the day he found he was able to get a sound that's almost in, almost indistinguishable from the 416 using his apogee mic so what does that mean go out buy an apogee mic no not probably not if but you got a 416 you got a 416 exactly but if you are the, one of those people that wants to have a go bag a go kit 
something that's ready to rock. Maybe it's in the glove box, something like if you're doing that kind of voiceover where you have to have 15, 20 minute turnaround, it's a small percentage of you out there that are, have that need that kind of turnaround. But if you do, something like that could be pretty nice to have. And, and knowing the sound quality is there uh, is, is, you know, confidence inspiring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be doing an actually an, a webinar on May 30th talking about recording on the road. We do plugs at the end of the show. Oh, okay. But it was, I figured that was a good segue. I just <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> That's a good idea. No, definitely talk about these, these technologies. I, I just picked up because I like finding things that are on the fringe that not everybody else is talking about. I just picked up an MXL studio 24. That is a USB mic that they came out with, I think in 2010, it's been around a while. Mm -hmm. And why it stood out uh, among the sea of microphones, even from MXL's own parts list, they have way too many mics, um, is that, well, for one, it does have a headphone jack, so you can get zero lat latency monitoring, which is handy for getting sound checks and working with Skype, things like that. But what also makes it kind of fun and interesting, which I will definitely be demonstrating on a George the Tech video at some point, is that the mic has built-in processing. So in the way that the Yamaha AG03 mm -hmm. has processing, which some of you may use, maybe most of you don't, in the way that it does that, this microphone does the same. So it has built-in compression, and you can set the parameters. It has a gate. Can't tell you whether it's any good, but it has one. Not until um, we hear it. Yeah, and it's got a low-pass or a high-pass filter, so you can dial in a high-pass filter. All features that could be really, really helpful when you're working on the road in less than ideal environments. So it was 129 bucks on eBay, new in the box. Cam comes in a really nice carrying kit with a little mic stand. I figured I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. So stay tuned for a little review on that. Thing. Yeah, a lot of good mics now for actually for re recording in your car, which is the key, by the way. Oh, another yeah. mic I saw recently popped up on my radar today. That's What's not it? USB. What? Is Jack has... An MXL CR89? I do. Now, Jack, let me turn on the mic. because I, yeah, I don't Hand Jack, Jack the mic. I, I don't have the uh, mic on for Jack right now. Because I'm going to put him on the spot here. Yes. That one there. It's tangled. It's tangled underneath her headphone cord. <laughs> All right. <laughs> High production <laughs> values tonight. There you go. I can just be here. Okay. <laughs> So, Jack, you happen to have a uh, MXL CR89, not a mic that comes up in too many conversations. That's true. Was this sort of like a best-kept secret microphone, and I'm busting it out now for everybody no, they, to hear? you're definitely not. That's my okay. talkback mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's nothing special. No, it looks good, though, but it's just it, a talkback mic. It I looks really cool. Like it sound, it has a honest. very, like, a, it has like a black piano finish. Yeah, and it's heavy as all get out. It's, right. It thing weighs like, I don't know, six pounds or some ridiculous thing. Yeah, it, you know? it's a really flat mic, isn't it? Isn't that what it's it is? Flat, it's flat. Uh, it needs a lot of gain. It's oh. very flat. Um it's a little bright, I think, but I haven't tested it extensively because once I set it up, I wasn't real thrilled with it. Yeah. I know that people sing with it, and they seem to like it for that. Okay. But for my purposes, it just wasn't working too well. All right. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I may not get one then. But well, I was looking at I was looking We just at lost that. any possibility of a sponsorship from MXL. Oh, don't they don't no, need us. No. Okay. They'll, they'll be all right. Thanks, okay. man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Jack Daniel. All righty. <laughs> but anyway, I saw that mic on his on it on a photo of him with Townsend Coleman <laughs> and in his studio, uh, and I, I was like, hmm, I've def I've seen that mic, but not in the wild. So I just ooh. thought I'd mention that one. That's a mileage may vary kind of mic. You may need to get it from uh, a place that has returns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So try it if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's try Jack it out might here. Bring it in. Bring it. Bring it into the studio and let's give it a shot. Yeah. All righty. Well. All right. Well, we, that's it for my tech. Okay. Minute. We have uh, that was about four minutes, but we'll minute. We'll keep it at that. Uh, we've got uh, Keith Farley coming up in just a little bit, and next we'll discuss sibilance. You know, you wouldn't think it's a big important thing, but that's what we're talking about next here on Voiceover Body Shop. Do not go away. And they finally do. They break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? 
go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take VO2GoGo's free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right. It's free. It's available online 24-7 at VO2GoGo.com. That's VO2GoGo.com. And, Jack, if you could move that up a little bit for me. For some reason... That's okay. I, I can read it from here. It's, you know, you can go to, yes, it's actually the best place to go is to go to gettingstartedinvo.com. Gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. All right. Well, you'll learn about the vocal skills you need the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class taught by VO2GoGo's David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Go there after the show. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? Okay. No wonder. On. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. Thank this you. software is the best. Your audio must be Note to self, broadcast get a new quality. <laughs> Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches it's, either doing we don't use that feature for over at all 30 years someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios he knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover your home dan leonard the home studio master Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. I'd like to take a few minutes now to thank one of our great sponsors, Source Elements. They are the creators of Source Connect, Source Connect Now, and many other useful studio tools. Not only do they make tools for streaming audio real time between your studio and the others, they make tools like Source Zip that allow you to transfer entire projects fully intact easily between stations. So like if you're producing in your Pro Tools session and you want to move everything with all the pieces intact, easiest way possible, quickest as possible, because it shrinks the file size way down, you might want to give Source Zip a try. Otherwise, most of you out there are going to be interested in Source Connect. Go give it a try. You can get a 15-day free trial right now over at source-elements.com. It's the best way and really the most professional way available right now used in the voiceover business to connect your studio, your voice, with the studio of choice that's hiring you and recording you from a distance. Thanks, Source Elements. We appreciate it, and we'll be right back. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, you know, sometimes, some mornings I get up and I check Facebook like I did last week. And that prompted an entire rant <laughs> on, on microphone choice. Facebook is a rant engine. It, it is. But as we always say, not a good place to 
crowdsource your home voiceover studio. No, I don't. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It does not. Yeah, and and it's good for like advice on a certain thing or a certain mic, maybe. Or, right. You but, know. But but what's your experience with this microphone? Well, it worked fine in my studio with my voice. Right. Who the heck are you? Right. You know every you know. every voice every voice uh, home voiceover studio is different. They yeah. all have to be custom built and tuned. Well, this morning. I can't even remember whose name it was. So you're safe, whoever you are. <laughs> um, it was a discussion about siblings, it was something along the lines of, it sounded great for years, and then I've gone to this microphone, and now it sounds sibilant. Mm -hmm. And everybody's, oh, well, it's do this and do that. And mm -hmm. then a couple of smart t people, like Tim Tippett's, jumped in there and said, mm -hmm. You know, it's probably the way you're using it. Because as we always like to say, it's not the equipment, it's how you use it. It can also be the way you're listening to it. That was my next point. And the fact of the matter is, is he said, one client was complaining about it, and now I really hear it. Right. That's the thing. When one person points out something, Got it in your not, head. it's stuck in your head now, and you can't get it out. Right. The fact of the matter is, is that client was probably listening on his iPhone. Or an iPhone or, I, or, or, laptop or a MacBook speaker. with crappy little speakers. Or an God HP with even what? lousier speakers. Yeah. And, uh, and and somehow that was sounding sibilant. I said, S let, let me listen to it. Yeah. So he sent out a copy to everybody on the thread. And he sent me a personal copy so mm -hmm. I could look at it and go. Yeah. And I listened. And I'm like, WTF? There's nothing wrong with this. It sounds fine. Maybe a little, a little sharp. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's like, you know, any engineer, as, as Harold Hill would say, I could deal with my friends with a wave of my hand, this very hand. It was simple, simple thing to do. Just right. a little bit off at about you know, 10K, maybe a little bit below that. Yeah. And they, they could adjust it. Yeah. No one's going to lose a job over an extra little sibilant S. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to a matter of mic technique and how you listen to it. Yeah, because if your your frame of reference for monitoring is not quite accurate, it's really going to screw up your impression of the way anything sounds. Right. I mean, if you if you what if you went for a month without cleaning your glasses? This is this reminds me of a story. Would explain a My lot. cousin's wife was an optometrist, and they would help folks that were on Medicaid, Medicaid, and whatever. And they had a lady come in one time. She's like, "I need more medicine for my glasses." <laughs> <laughs> and my cousin takes her glasses off her face, wipes the lenses off, puts them back on her face, and she's like, it's a oh, miracle. That's so much better. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, and then she went home. It's like that with sound. I mean, if you're, if you're, frame of reference is way out of who are we having an earthquake um <laughs> is that what it is <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> um if your frame of reference is so clouded or inaccurate you just can't trust it so bounce it off a couple people whose ears you do trust like me or him. me <laughs> <laughs> because that's what that's the kind of thing that we do we'll listen to the audio in our listening environments on our monitors or headphones things that we listen to day in day out we and understand we'll listen on both yes and we'll, we'll understand the context of how you sound among everything else and if at that point we think you sound sibilant out of out of the bounds of usability right you know we'll we'll tell you and give you some ideas what to do and what really are there really some microphones that are more susceptible to sibilance than others in your experience? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the notoriously less expensive condenser microphones tend to be a little on the bright side. Um, one that comes to mind is the Rode NT1A. And That's everybody's a, got one of those. That is a culprit yeah. for being a little bit too bright. Um, it's so common because it's very affordable and it's very quiet, quiet. It's, it's not very little self noise yeah, yeah so it, it gets sold a lot many starter studios are rode nt1a scarlet 2i2 boom you know i i hear that probably once a week um but it can be a little bit bright a little proper eq can fix that um but it's not going to be my first mic for everybody because of that mm -hmm. if you tend to already be a very bright sharp voice with a lot of top end a mic that's top endy may not be the best for you Right. But I, oh, go ahead. I have one more thing to tag on to that. Okay. Go for it. I did have a And client. then I'll try to remember what it was I was going to say. But then you go and I'll, and then I'll go. Okay. Age before beauty. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
And thank you for respecting that. Um, another thing, as far as technique is concerned, is I tend to find that people who are sibilant also are over projecting and overperforming and over pushing their vocal technique. They are. You could definitely coach your uh, sibilant just, voice. If you'll just uh, learn to relax your tongue and talk normally the way we normally talk, you know, and maybe, you know, concentrate on that and just learn to relax and not mm -hmm. press your tongue so hard against the roof of your mouth. So you're trying to get things out a little bit louder and saying things a little bit more like Daffy Duck. Um, that will reduce sibilance a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my technique is essential, but your thoughts again, well, what were you going to say? Yeah. Sibilance can be in a lot of different frequency bands or, you know, sometimes it can be really high sibilance, the very top, top stuff. Right. Sometimes it can be upper mid range, right. that range that's, I sometimes call it the ice pick in the forehead range where it's yeah. just like, ah, and, um, certain microphones do have a bit of a boost in that range. And yeah. some of the Neumanns do. I had a client client with a TLM 49, Ooh, nice one that's mic. not quite as, you know, properly popular, popular. And in his studio with his voice, that upper mid range sort of rise or boost was just not flattering on his voice. And I was always EQing it, trying to flatten it out. It just never quite sounded right. Hmm. And that was one of those cases where I recommended bizarrely a much less expensive microphone for him to try. And it would hurt his sensibilities to do that. But I said, why not give, in this case, I said, how about a Caddy 100S a shot? Great mic. Because there's a really cool website. You know it, recordinghacks.com. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they make the, the, the same guys do the, uh, the microphone. The jolly. The, 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 yeah, the no, not Jolly. He does the, uh, the, I'm sorry. Why brain farting? Oh, what's the guy's name? You built some of his mics. Oh, the ones that you've built. Oh, the Record. mic parts. Yeah, mic yeah. Parts. Mic Same parts guy that does make parts. He does the, the mic that uh, Jordan Reynolds came up. Anyway, that uh, website allows you to look at frequency charts for each mic and compare two of them on top of each other. It's Ooh. very cool. Upper right-hand corner, search for mics. Once you see a frequency plot, click on it. It pops up in its own window. And once you're in there, there's another search box. So you can type in another mic. And it will overlay the frequency responses. And what was amazing was that the TLM had this like curve right here. And then the CAD was like flat and then had a little bump at the very top. So okay. they had very different responses. And the CAD sounded much smoother, much more flattering for him. So he was like, I can't believe I'm going to sell this Neumann for this CAD. I'm like, you know what? It just has to work. It has to work with your voice. Right. It has to sound good. And if yeah. it sounds good. It is good. good. And and that's the bottom line. You know, I just sold my TLM 103. Interesting. I said, I don't need I it. hope Chris doesn't see it. Chris, we love you. We love yeah. you. You know we love you. But I'm Neumann. using a Sennheiser 416 see? almost exclusively now. There so. you go. I'm not going to dump the, the the great Sennheiser Neumann mics. They're, no. you know, but the TLM 103 just wasn't, it, it was just wasn't right for me anymore. Yeah. I mean, I had it for like 12 years. It was my main mic. Went to the 416. It was, it's easier to work with and the mic technique on it is easier. It makes you sound more natural. I gotta say, I hear that, I hear that story over and over it's, again. That's because it it's must be true. Yeah. So, and you're not going to get much sibilance with a 416 unless you're really like you, right yeah, on if, top of it. If you shoot it right into your mouth, it's like, it's like a laser. So if the sibilance is coming from somewhere in your teeth and it's right. pointing there, oh, it's going to hear it. Right. That's why the. The up and below position works so well right. with that. And and that's why mic technique is so important. Yeah. You know, and we're always trying to show people have the mic at about eye level, talk underneath it, be five to seven inches away or further, and make sure you compensate for the with the proper level. And usually that eliminates so many problems, mouth noises and sibilance and or what perceived sibilance. Although I think you and I are probably pretty much convinced that sibilance is in the ear of the beholder, not necessarily the reality of what everybody else is hearing and depending yeah. on what they're listening. Sometimes, to. yes. Yeah. Sometimes that is the case. That is the case. So well, send the audio to us before you make a final judgment and go selling your mic. And that's done through your website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, where I just click on the specimen collection cup and send me a specimen of your audio. Mm -hmm. And for you... And I have that same kind of thing over at georgethetech.com. If you go to the services menu, you look for a sound check. 
send your audio in and I'll give you my opinion about what that audio sounds like and what it could be, what you could do to make little improvements. So, all right. That hey, gets you in the right direction. Nobody has as much experience with home voiceover studios than you or I. Everybody else, they're just, they're experts in their own studio. Yeah. Hundreds, thousands of studios. We know what's going on. All right. Keith Farley is going to join us in just a couple minutes. So stay right where you are. We'll be right back on voiceover body shop style power you're watching the home of the nfl the all-new iphone reserve your disney world season pass now through all the runny noses three in the morning coughs an all-new american crime story tonight on fx this week only it's pasta fest at olive garden heart rate prime blood pressure perfect i grew up with the classics and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. All right, we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, Keith Farley is our guest coming up right now. Why don't we see and hear some of the stuff he does? Break up with lingering food. For that just brushed clean feeling. Eat, drink, chew, orbit. You know that moment? The moment you realize you need to do something with your old 401k. When you change jobs, you certainly didn't take a sabbatical. You didn't even go on vacation. So why should your retirement savings? Welcome to the new Scott Trade. Whether you know where you're going or need guidance to get there, we're here to help. Now is your moment. Hey, you want to get with me? No, you're chocolate and I'm a snack. <laughs> yeah, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Oh. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. These Kobe sixes will make you a beast. Kobe Bryant for the win! Hey, wait. Hornitos premium tequila, purer than your intentions. I was chosen for this mission because killing is an art, and I am a master. You know that moment? The moment it hits you. Seems like yesterday she was born, and tomorrow she'll be off to college. Let's see, 12 years with inflation. Ooh. Let that sink in for a moment. Then come see us. Welcome to the new Scott Trade. Whether you know where you're going or need guidance to get there, we're here to help. Now is your moment. Hey, you know, Keith Farley is an actor, voice actor, casting director, and voice director with a long list of notable credits. Keith has also written for, produced, and or voice directed episodes of Rugrats, as told by Ginger and the Wild Thornberries. Keith is also the co-author of Bat Boy, the musical, <laughs> with Brian Fleming and Lawrence O'Keefe, which was the recipient of the 2001 Outer Critics Circle and Lucille Lortel Awards for Best Off-Broadway Musical. And guess what? He's in our studio right now. Let's welcome Keith Farley. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Dan. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Just for the record, Bat, yes. Bat Boy is not about baseball. It's not? No. It's about an actual... Half bat, bat, half boy, discovered in a cave in West Virginia. Just, ah. just to be clear, a common misconception. And, and you made a musical <laughs> out of it. We did. Like, almost like Cause, Fatwa. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably going to be even funnier. Anyway, where are you from originally? Uh, I'm all over California. My okay. father worked for the state of California. Uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife was in the Coast Guard. So we bumped around a bit from Fremont in the Bay Area mm -hmm. to Long Beach and eventually... All roads, when you're working for the state, lead to Sacramento. Uh, and then I came back down here to finish my degree at UCLA. And I've been here ever since. Fascinating that you would say UCLA. All great actors that you see, the ones that win the Academy Awards and the ones that are always working, you know, they, they didn't go to Mississippi Central State. 
<laughs> you know, they, they I'm sure some of I, them do. I, I'm but, sure and I'm sure Mississippi Central State is a great school, just not for theater. Uh but the great ones have gone to Yale, Harvard, uh, you know, Princeton, UCLA, USC. What makes them so much better? There are a lot of great schools in Chicago too. Don't, yes. don't forget NYU okay. and, yeah. and you know, don't Nor forget Northwestern and Northwestern and, right. and yeah. So there's there are a lot of good acting schools around. Juilliard, of course. Um I don't a lot of them do are audition based now. So they're looking for something particular. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it may just be um the level of the number of people who audition right. and then whittling that down. It's kind of like what I do with casting is I hear hundreds of auditions for each role that I'm casting. And my job is to winnow that down to 10 to 15, 20 sometime um, performers who I think would be good mm -hmm. in the role. So I think it's just, it's, it's a numbers game and it's to a certain extent. Right. Um, I don't think some of the best actors in the country are thinking about Fresno State. <laughs> Even though they may if actually I may, be going. And I'll tell you, <laughs> they're up and comers. <laughs> Now you've been you've been very successful at making this transition uh, from and you've done a lot of you got a lot of credits on screen credits did a lot of TV shows did you do Law and Order No I wasn't I, I wasn't, wasn't in New York long, long enough to do Law and Order <laughs> sadly but they're yeah. still making them they're, they, they, look how many different versions do they have There's time Yeah but you you were in a number of very popular series and you were able to get roles in those sorts of things when the video game industry started to take over, you've successfully made that transition into doing voice work, direction. How did you make that transition? You know, I, it's being in the right place at the right time. Uh, and I have to give credit where credit is due. It goes to my wife, uh, Ann Kloss Farley. Good part. Yeah. That's good good point. Mm -hmm. she, um, she was working at Klasky Chupo. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a PA there. And when the show went on hiatus, she ended up picking up a job at Spumco with John Chris Felusi doing the original Ren and Stimpy's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, the, the best. <laughs> I always, I always, for that show. The caveat is the original Ren and Stimpy when John and his crew uh, were in control. So she was having a blast working over there. She was the head of the fan club and also artist intake. So when Duckman came back, she didn't want to go back to work as a PA on Duckman. She was happy where she was at. So she was like, why don't you go do the PA thing? And I was like, why? I have a semi, I have a bit of a career in, you know, TV I'm an actor. and <laughs> table waiting um, off and on. Uh, but she talked me and she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I want to write and direct and act. And she said, you're going to meet writers at Klasky. You're going to meet directors at Klasky and actors come through there every day. So I went as a PA and uh, I did craft services for the recordings you did craft and I got services. to meet. Wow. Uh, Jason Alexander, uh, people who I still work with today, Greg Berger, E.G. Daly, who were all on um, Duckman. Right. Uh, and so I got to know them a little bit there. I worked my way up through the production ladder over the course of three years. And then two things happened. We did a <clears throat> film festival in Park City, Utah. We had a film uh, that my writing partner, Brian Fleming, had made that he had put me in, which was rejected from Sundance, rejected from Slamdance. So we went to Park City and opened Slum Dance, <laughs> which was a uh, a unique independent film festival, a one-off, 1997, uh, in the basement of the Mrs. Fields Cookie Factory, which happened to be right next door to the Egyptian Theater on Main Street. So it was a terrific um, opportunity. got us a lot of attention. Uh, we had an offer to do some stuff with the uh, Independent Film Channel, and Bat Boy was starting to get some heat. So I went to my boss and I said, hey, listen, I take a little time off to go. Some of this stuff is starting to come through. And she said, you know what? We've been thinking about you. And our new creative director, Paul DeMeyer, who um, I'd worked with on Mad TV, uh, producing uh, the Spy vs. Spy interstitials oh, for cool. Mad TV, mm -hmm. which was the best job ever because I got to sit at my desk and go through Mad Magazines oh, and decide which which of the Spy vs. Spies my, were the ones. One of my favorite should. cartoons of all Me time. Me too. Uh, and... Um, so Paul was becoming creative director of the studio, and he felt that he could talk to everybody on staff, from the writers to the colorists to the designers, but he just didn't really feel like he knew how to communicate with actors uh, and had a sense that I did. So they said, if, listen, if you want to take over voice directing for Rugrats, you'll work one or two days a week. 
you'll make about what you're making now, and then you'll be free to do these other projects um, that have come your way as well. Right. So it was a real gift to me from Paul and, and from Margot yeah. Pipkin. Yeah. And what a great cast, too, to work with. It was a bit daunting. I, yeah. will, I won't lie. As a, as a very green, I'd done some directing with the Actors Gang, which is a theater company that I belong to. Um, but to walk into that room with Jack Riley and again with E.G. Daly and Kath Susi, Melanie Chartoff, Michael Bell. I mean, it's a spectacular cast. Tom Bosley. Tom Bosley. Yep. 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 And then Joe Alasky, uh, in the later years. Um, it was just a, it was a real trial by fire and it took me a while to get my legs under me. But once, uh, that first season was coming to a close, we had a working relationship that carried for five seasons and that led to Rugrats video games. Ah. which then introduced me to a lot of the people that I'm working with today. So it really was about marrying well. Uh, and <laughs> oh, always a good one being in the right place at the right time. Right. So, so you've, you've, you've graduated from, you know, the Rugrats video games to this new genre that, I mean, it's not all that new, all these, these RPGs and, and they're really telling a story. The video game business is it's outperforming the movie business these days. Yeah. And, uh, so how is it that, you know, you were able to make that transition to that? Well, it's all for me, it's all storytelling. Uh, it's all about making sure that the, whatever's on the printed page, um, gets to the audience as clearly as possible. So I'm working in partnership, uh, with actors to try to make sure that their performance is telling the story as simply and clearly as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Now, it's from what I can see from some of the trailers, it's very cinematic, and they're probably using a lot of cinematic things with it. But it's most of it's all CG and and not real people in them, except occasionally it is live action, isn't it? It's been it's it, there are so many different ways. That's the the amazing thing about the video game industry that's so different from the film industry. Mm -hmm. I love the studios being built around us <laughs> yeah. as we do the show. <laughs> this is. <laughs> This is just a, this is thrilling. Um, it's going to be great when it's finished. It's really, it's going to be so we're, great. We're so hopeful. <laughs> I was hoping I don't get, I don't get pelted at some point. Um, your question? Uh, well, we were talking about, you know, the, uh, the, the way video games are today and it's, it's such a huge right. business, but you know, it, it, it involves creating characters ah we we're talking about mocap and performance capture yes and yes. there are so many different ways to to skin that i mean we've done uh voice matches to performers who kind of pantomimed right sometimes the performers on the mocap stage will receive the dialogue that we record mm -hmm. uh and perform to that uh frequently now it's an actor is hired to do a full performance right uh, on a stage uh, a game i did a, a couple years ago called farpoint we had two actors, um, Laura Bailey and E.K. Amati, who were in the full body suits with the cameras on their heads. Oh, E.K. E.K. I worked with him. He's one of my faves. Dude, um, Laura's no slouch either. Um, uh, but they were both, it was a full performance capture um, VR title, which mm -hmm. was really interesting because in VR, it's as if I'm sitting next to you right now and right. I can move in closer and move right. away and look over here. And um, the camera goes with you so the the performance there was meant to be extremely intimate um which was a lot of fun mm. it's if you're just joining us you've missed a lot already the studio falling apart everything all <laughs> these fun things that go on here at voice over body shop our guest is keith farley who is an actor casting director and voice uh director and a bunch of other things along with being a writer mm -hmm. we can even talk about that a little bit more uh, if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room. And we know Jack Daniel is here because he's sitting on the couch right over here, acting as our social media czar and getting those questions to us. Uh, what goes into your character creating process? I mean, most of us are, you know, we're just reading the copy and stuff. You're doing some serious acting here. How do you, when you see a role, you've auditioned for something or you're auditioning, how do you create that character? from cold. I mean, if you're auditioning for it or something along those lines, well, you, you, you have to ask yourself some questions. Okay. And that's the thing. It's like, so often I think we, we get the, we get our material and we're just in a hurry to get to the microphone and do our performance. Um, but it does benefit to stop and take a moment, um, and ask yourself some acting questions. Um, I really believe in, in, uh, 
emotional states. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that it's, and it's about what is the audience meant to feel as opposed to what am I feeling, which is the method approach, which is that sort of working mm -hmm. inside and creating an authentic emotion. Mm -hmm. um, I really believe that we're bringing the best actors or servants to the audience, both servants to the writing and to the audience. So it's about investing the copy with an emotional state. So I'll go down the side of my copy and just decide, and there are only four, there's happy, sad, angry, and afraid. Uh, and again, within those, there's a great spectrum of expression from, right. you know, content to ecstatic, you know, from bummed to suicidal. Um, so you just, you know, you find where the spectrum is, but the idea is to play those emotional states to know, and frequently good copy, good audition copy will have three or four or five or eight different clips right. to perform. Um, and each one you should be able to assign an emotional state fairly quickly. Right. So I do that. Uh, and then I think about, you know, wh where am I and who am I talking to? Those are really important questions to ask. Um, because you'll speak to someone differently if you're in a in a dance club than you will if you're um, sitting in bed after some canoodling. <laughs> Absolutely. I just got to make a note that I actually canoodling, use canoodling, canoodling in a canoodling, sentence. Yes. So that's done. Playing word chums much? I keep it on my hand. There you yeah. go. Good, mm -hmm. good. Um, a lot of us in the voice acting business, you know, and we are all voice actors, although I, for, I see a lot of examples of voice overacting. <laughs> uh, as opposed to voiceover acting. Um, I will credit you every time I use that from now on. I, thank you very That's much. That's a good one. Oh, I'm glad I came up with that. Uh, so we're voice actors, but a lot of us are not doing big characters. We're not doing animation. Uh, we're not doing video games as much as everybody wants to because it is such a hefty business these days. Um, and it's difficult to do if you're not here in Los Angeles. True. Uh, how can you create a character to read something about let's talk about diarrhea you know or let's. let's or you're doing some medical narration and talking about ankylosing spondylitis to a bunch of doctors who are sitting there going how do you make that how do you create something that is going to make that's going to bring that copy alive even though some of that copy is death warmed over and again i guess it's asking the same questions that's the nature of the beast isn't it i mean yeah it's, it's about the writing and it's about bringing what's on that page to the audience um, and trying to, with as, with as much clarity as possible. And that comes back to the, the, um, the technical components of a performance, of right. having a voice that is clear uh, and precise. Uh, and a lot of times that's all that's required, but it never hurts to have a point of view and to drop those ideas in, like, who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. Where am I? Who am I talking to? Because once again, if you are, if you sit down with your medical copy and you imagine that you're sitting, I did a couple of um, these sort of things for Ford uh, and for Citibank. And the imagination there was just that instead of the computer screen, that's where I would sit. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to someone who probably doesn't want to be here, but I've got some important information that I need to get across about diversity or the latest thing. And I'm just going to talk to you about it right. um, because it's important. And so once you just kind of put those little tiny things in your head, it, it helps to a make the medicine go down. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, it also helps you connect with the person who's sitting on the other side of the, of the computer screen or in the conference room. Mm -hmm. And again, if you're in a conference room, you're, that's a, where am I question? And that's going to be a different read. Yeah. Because talking to 150 people is different than talking to one. Right. And, and of course, they'll say this is for a conference where everybody's going to be watching it, or this is for a training film that guys are going to be sitting and gals are going to be sitting in a conference room going, do I have to watch this? And you got to let's make it right. Let's make it interesting yeah. and let's make it compelling. It's the question I come back two questions that I come back to almost every time I'm working with a client or a student or even in the booth. And directing, although we frequently go over that information mm -hmm. when we're working. Right. Like, here's where you are, and here's who you're talking to. Right. We had uh, Elko Drozdowski on a couple of weeks ago. I love him. Great guy. He just retired, you know, so he won't help anybody with their career now, I don't think. But couldn't hurt to ask. 
Uh, but we talked about the casting process from the agent's perspective. Sure. And as a casting director, what's your process like? You talked about it a couple of minutes ago, but tell us really what goes into casting for a video game or for anything for that matter. I like to try to, I mean, there's a wide range of materials that you'll get for a, a casting audition. Um, sometimes it's two or three or four pages of, Here's the universe of the game. Here are the characters of the game. Here are games that have come before. And here's our character. Here are some vo actor vocal references that you can look at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I try to distill that for the agent down to two or three sentences. Okay. Um, that will just give a, um, how old is the character, male or female? Is there any sort of accent that needs to go? And then just a real quick... Um, description of the character, usually a sentence or two or three for each of the characters. And I send that out with the sides attached that have the more thorough descriptions. Agents don't have a lot of time. They're dealing with this avalanche and they're trying to get this work out to their clients, get the materials back, make it sound nice, send it off. Mm -hmm. So I want to take up as little of the agent's time as possible and give them a really clear idea of exactly what I'm looking for in as little space as possible. The actors can then take time with the material, and I hope they will. Uh, and then when I get the materials back, agents will send between 5 and 25 auditions. I mean, agents. some agents have enormous rosters and just send me an avalanche of clients. And then I'm going through and I'm listening through to, again, as I said before, to whittle those down. To um, I usually make a file folder with the people that I think are right for the role. And then a second file folder with, which usually contains actors that I thought were interesting, uh, or if I'm a little off base, um, that the clients can then go in there and sort of dig around a little bit. And then sometimes if there's room, I'll throw in some alts for people who were, I thought maybe I'd like to see. And if there's going to be callbacks, it's even more interesting because right. I'll put people in those files that I would like to see thinking really interesting performance. And if I work with them, we can really get something that's right. Mm -hmm. So all of that sort of goes into it. And it's very, it's not the, not a conscious process. I mean, you're listening and it's a lot of it is very instinctual, right. just like, ah, there it is. Right. Uh, no, 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 uh, maybe. Right. And you, you know, file that one over. So, <laughs> but it's tricky and it's hard. I have to take, I take, I have to take a lot of breaks because it's really easy to get worn down when you're listening to the same copy over and over again and, and, so, and a lot of people doing it the same way yeah yeah or even if they're doing it different ways it's right. still it just becomes this your head just starts to ring with what's going on so i take lots of breaks every every you know 30 45 minutes i take the headphones off and take the dogs for a walk or have a glass of water or you know something just to clear my head so i can come back fresh what can people do to improve their chances in an audition for something like that. I know there's a billion different you know, things, but give us one or two little tidbits that at least would work for you. It's really funny. I think when I, a lot of times when I teach or when I'm doing guest workshops, I, I, I just tell the students, it's like everyone's looking for the magic key that opens the door to booking everything you audition for. And that key doesn't exist. Um, focus instead on being a better actor. Focus instead on making sense of the material. Focus instead on where am I, who am I talking to, what state am I playing, right. and all the acting questions, and focusing rather on, you know, I get auditions, I did a wonderful um, thing recently where a bunch of actors sent me auditions, and I got to respond to each individual actor, and so often I was like, man, your signal chain sounds great, <laughs> but think about how you're performing. You know, right. they spent so much time majoring and I, I know you guys major in these, in these things, but right. it's majoring in the minors for an actor. Right. You want to, and George said it earlier, you want a setup and you said it too, where you can press play and play. Right. Or press record and play. Right. Yeah. Set it and forget it. Right. As opposed to like, all I think about is how great my signal sounds and less focus goes in or how great my voice sounds. Right. You get a lot of, people who are really, really good at making copy sound delicious. Uh, and but that doesn't work for some alien who's about to slaughter somebody else. No. When you're getting into animation and, <laughs> and video game voiceover in particular, and even more and more into commercial VO, 
you want to have a, um, an idea of where you are, who you're talking to, play an emotional state, and make a connection. Think about the person who's listening and what you want them to feel. Yeah. Okay. So you get through that process and you book the gig. And there you are in the booth. And so many of us are so used to being self-directed, especially in auditions, mm -hmm. because it's like, uh, okay, what do I do with this? And you do the copy and, you know, maybe make the right choice. And out of a hundred times, you know, even though, you know, you're not going to get the freaking job, but eventually you are. And when you do, you're going to work with a director. How do you work with a director and, and not make yourself look like an idiot? It's, it, well, sometimes it's, looking like an idiot it, is part of the it, game. If it calls for that in the <laughs> script, I can understand that. But uh, how, how do you work with a, a director? What's, what's the real key? Just cooperating, I would imagine. Yeah, don't be... The, the one thing that, that new actors, that really green actors, tend to mistake direction for criticism. Right. Uh, and it's not. Um, view the director as a partner. Uh, I view the actor as a partner, and I view myself as a partner. Uh, when I'm directing and when I'm acting, I'm on the other side. I want to, again, if you're, if you're, if your mindset is that of a servant, right. that you want to be, you want to service the author and the audience, right. then the director is your partner in that, in that process. Uh, so that when an actor, when a director says, um, no, let's, let's slow it down a little bit. Right. Let's hit this word and that word saying, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just puts you in that negative spiral as opposed to first time I had James Arnold Taylor came in for a piece I was directing and I gave him a piece of direction and he went, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. And that was like a revelation for me as a director. I was like, oh, he said, thank you Ooh. for the direction. And if you, if you maintain that attitude of, of gratitude, um, which rhymes, and I'm sure somebody has written that book Yeah, have an attitude of gratitude. Um, it helps. It helps. Um, that said, if, if the direction is not helping you, right. Um, I've heard this direction from someone who shall remain nameless. This character is based on my daughter's preschool teacher. So. <laughs> uh, That's exactly what happened. Oh, God. That's exactly what <laughs> happened on the other side of the glass. The actor went, uh, <laughs> Because they nothing. want, <laughs> they want to give you what you want, but they can't because they don't know who your daughter's preschool exactly. teacher is. Yeah. But they have to, but they can't. But they have to, but they can't. And again, boo, you get in a spiral and you end up <laughs> yeah, not does. being able to perform at all. So, yeah. I try to keep a very welcoming, um, warm environment in the studio. I try to keep things um, light, uh, pleasant, um, and remind to remind everybody that we are making games and the best way to do that is to play ourselves. Right. So, yeah. And I like people who play the games to actually be doing them too. Yeah. It, okay. It doesn't matter. Some okay. do, some, some don't. don't. Okay. Good actors can do it. Right. And again, it's a very specialized skill set. Animation and video games in particular. Animation, at least you get the script the night before. Mm -hmm. uh, with video games, you walk in and there's a stack of paper on a microphone stand and a microphone and you have to just go. Right. Um, and hopefully you can get some context from your director and if hopefully the writer's there, but that's not always the case. So you've yeah. got to make quick choices on the fly and be able to just stand and deliver. Okay. Once again, we're talking with Keith Farley about all sorts of stuff. And we're, we're covering the gamut here. Uh, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. We get lots of questions there, lots Jack. Questions. Outstanding. All right. Let's talk about, uh, about the union for a bit. Sure. Uh, some people have been saying that the union really doesn't care about voiceover a whole lot. At least not true. And <laughs> tell us what the union is, is doing here. It's not true. Uh, we just last week uh, in, uh, opened the VO department at SAG-AFTRA, uh, which is now staffed up um, by Katie Watson, who is an extraordinary. I've been working with her uh, for the last couple of years. She um, promulgated our low budget interactive agreement, which has been really successful. She's had her hand in the interactive world. She knows what she's doing. She'll be covering interactive promos and trailers mm. for SAG after that's the voiceover department. Animation goes under TV theatrical, um, because that's where it lives, mm -hmm. uh, and commercials go under the commercial contract. So for interactive promos and trailers, Katie Watson is your person and she's got a staff on board 
We have organizers who are taking VO actors out to lunch, taking VO actors out to lunch. Taking, I, I, I you know, I haven't been asked and, out to lunch yet. Well, so I'm, you're talking I'm to in the, the right guy. <laughs> so, and um, I'm really excited. We're, we're starting to do workshops to help actors manage their business and manage their careers and manage their voices. Uh, and next Monday night, um, you'll have to watch this show on tape, I guess, no. uh, on the YouTube, because we're having a, a vocal health seminar. Uh, at sag -Aftra. I'll bet you're having Dr. Gupta on there. Dr. Rena God, she's, Gupta. She's good. She is. She is. She's amazing. Uh, I hope she brings her scope. The last time, <laughs> last time I went <laughs> to her workshop, she had the live scope. Oh, oh yeah. Let's take a look at your lyrics. And she got this dude up <laughs> yeah. who had done two four-hour creature Ooh. sessions oh, the cool. day before. Yeah. And scoped him, sprayed him with the, you know, relax your throat right. thing. Put the scope down in there, and we could see... His vocal cords said you could see that there was a little bit of bruising and a little bit of damage. And it was just as clear as a bell. Wow. And mm. it was so great. She's like, yeah, you're good. Everything's fine. You know, it's just, I would just take seven to 10 days of vocal rest. Seven and everybody, to 10. Seven to 10 <laughs> days. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Just oh. don't talk for seven to 10 days <laughs> and your voice will heal up right nice like. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that was just, you just kids, saw so. every jaw in the room just so, drop. So what you're saying is the hourly rate on that gig just dropped dramatically. <laughs> when you factor in. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. 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 You're going to be, you're going to be silent for 240 hours. So factor yeah. that in. Mm. Good to know. <laughs> but that's the, you know, that's the nature of the business. I mean, yeah. that's what we do. Um, and I think actors and I think that um, developers too are starting to, understand um when i work for activision um they have reduced all vocally stressful sessions to two hours mm -hmm. uh years ago um and they told me straight up they were like we don't get good performances after two hours when actors are projecting at this level when they're doing these textured voices that right. you know that do they hurt I there's know. no way around it yeah I gotta give them some breaks yeah keep so hydrated. we're doing that and then later in the year we'll do um some talk about contracts we're trying to keep folks up uh to speed on the bonuses that are now available for the video game contract and um we just want to make sure that there's a really clear it's up it goes two ways like the union needs to be responsive and in order for the union to be responsive they have to be listening to the performers um and performers need to know who to call and how to get good service and the union needs to provide good service because there are too many stories that i've heard over the years about making four phone calls and getting four different answers um so we're trying to, we're working really hard um, with the Interactive Performers Committee and the National Voiceover Committee, of which I'm chair, um, to really make sure that the union is responsible to VO actors and that VO actors are communicating with the union so they can be responsive. It's a two-way street. So it's our union, so we got to take charge and step up. All right. Well, we gotta, we're got we going to have lots of questions from our audience, but one last hey. thing. And I guess George knows a lot about this. The, the VO Lounge. Ah, Tell us about it. the VO Lounge. It was a dream of mine. Um, I was we we had bought a house a few years ago. Uh, we kind of got it all set up, and I had my office with my studio in the closet, which was reasonably soundproofed. Um, and I was walking one day through a hallway that split these two tiny rooms, and I had my kid sleeping on one side, and the other side was kind of a sitting room for her and her friends which never got used. It just became a hallway. And I stood in the, in on that wall and I kind of looked to one side and I looked to the other and I thought, God, if this wall went away, this would make a really nice space where I could work out and I could have students in. And that began the dream. Uh, and I gave George a call and we started working together. And, um, I went from just the initial packet of stuff and looked through that and thought, nah, 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 I'm going to need a project manager <laughs> right. on this one. It's kind of a big deal. Um, and worked with George as the manager and then a really great um, Mark Shouten, S-H-O-U-T-E-N, uh, was our contractor who had done sound work before. And an appropriate his, name for that. Yeah, Shouten. Yeah. He was shouting <laughs> all over the place, but you couldn't hear him because it was soundproof. <laughs> um and it's just a beautiful space. We um, initially dropped the booth in like a, just a big rectangle. And then I realized it needed to kind of be on a 45 degree bias, much like your studio is here, um, so that I could put a banquette in and get eight students in there comfortably. 
Um, and we managed to make that work and it sounds great. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to have that uh, available. We're just wrapping up our first round of uh, classes uh, for character VO for animation and video games and getting ready to start up a, a second round. So I don't know if any of your students or any folks out there in the if LA I were, area. If I was interested in that, how would one contact you and get involved? Get to keithfarley.com. That's K-E-Y-T-H-E-F-A-R-L-E-Y.com. And uh, click over to the VO Lounge. And then you'll, you'll there's contact information there. Good. More stuff to do. All right. Well, we're talking with Keith Farley. We've got lots of questions from our audience. And uh, we'll get to those right after these messages. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra. has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. You know, one of the best sponsors we have on the show, and it's great having sponsors because it does help us like pay the bills because it's not for free, but it's important that we have great sponsors on this show. People who have believed in what we've been doing for seven years. And, uh, the guy that's been with us all along is Harlan Hogan. And he runs a great website that is only for you voice actors called voiceoveressentials.com voiceoveressentials.com he has everything you could possibly need in a home voiceover studio so if george and i tell you you need one of these or you need one of those that's one of the best places to go and there's a lot of good reasons for that one he's got his signature series uh products like the vo1a microphone which george will now talk into this is the VO1A microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the, uh, and he's also wearing the Harlan Hogan Signature Series headphones. Please model those for us, George. There they are right there. Beautiful headphones, wonderful uh, band on it. It's got memory foam and leather, and it's just great stuff. And uh, also, he, he's got a lot of other cool things that are there, along with his book about recording voiceover for uh, for modern voice actors and uh, lots of other books and lots of other products but the best part is is he takes care of his customers like nobody else out there if you don't like what you get which is impossible you buy a porta booth you're gonna love it it's gonna work you buy the headphones they're gonna work you're gonna love them but if for some strange reason you're one of those people it's like it's not up to my expectations return it he'll take it back no questions asked. 
He may ask us some questions, but he won't say a word to you about it. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com. Best way to do that is go to the bottom of the page here at the VOBS website, and there's a picture of Harlan talking into his Portabooth Pro. You'll recognize him. He's the guy with the gray hair wearing the headphones talking into a Portabooth Pro. Click on that. It will take you right over to voiceoveressentials.com, and you can buy every last thing he has on the shelf there because it will benefit you. So go on over there right now, and thanks for sponsoring us for seven years, Harlan. We love you. Style. Power. Watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, Perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired, then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Keith Farley is our guest, and we're talking about all sorts of cool stuff in the voiceover business especially in animation and video games and stuff like that. But we've got lots of great questions from our wonderful audience out there. Thank you for being with us in the chat room and uh, participating in the show. Scott Brick had a quick comment. Yes, he He's did. actually watching our show. Scott is one of my dear friends. He's a great guy. He says, this is one of those moments where the love button is woefully ins is insufficient. <laughs> Keith's perspective is invaluable, and I will always learn something. And that's a sign of a great actor. He continues to learn. Scott is a terrific actor. Yeah. I had the pleasure of uh, playing uh, with him in Hamlet. Oh, gosh. On oh. the uh, Frude Playhouse at UCLA. He played. He was Horatio, uh -oh. and I was Fortinbras. Ah. And I got to, the director had a brilliant idea to place me uh, upstage center on a big pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> and have me sit there, uh, not only through the entire production of Hamlet, yeah. but from the half hour before when the audience came into the theater, oh, unmoving <laughs> throughout Hamlet. And then at the end, I stood up and had my little soliloquy and split. <laughs> <laughs> that was me and Scott, circa 19. But uh, Scott's a dear, dear, dear friend. Yeah. And he credits his Shakespearean acting to a lot of his success in audiobooks, too. So. Doesn't hurt. All right. Tom Machen has a question. Mr. Whittem. A question. Yep. He's got, when you really break it down, he has four. Okay. Well, let's see <laughs> so, if we can combine them a little bit. Yes, you know. no, maybe, <laughs> yeah. uh, most of the time. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, the first part is, uh, what are the four things? Four. Ah, four so the things, first question has four parts. <laughs> what are the four things you look for in a video game demo? That's a great question because um, video game demos are sort of are up and coming right now. And I'll let you in on a dirty little secret. If, if you're auditioning for a video game, chances are I'm going to listen to your commercial demo. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Video game demos are great. Uh, and I think they're, they're useful. Um, there's a lot of work in the video game industry. So having one is a really good idea. But frequently I'm just looking for the sound of your natural voice. I'm just looking for what you sound like, and I can sort of figure then if you want. So if you're not doing an audition for me, if I'm just saying like, hey, listen, I need 20 characters to do this and that and that and this, agents will send me names and I will listen to demos. And more often than not, I will listen to the the commercial demo um, before I would listen to a interactive demo. You're going to get a good idea of who that person is right. without, without them voice overacting. That said, <laughs> when if you're going to do one, uh, understand where you fit. Right. in the industry um know the industry and know where you fit in it um we don't need to hear <clears throat> frequently like really high clear voices as military grunts mm -hmm. right. uh, nor do we want to hear low gruff voices as eunuchs so um know, know where you fit in the in the industry and pace your demo out accordingly those would be the best things and again same same things comes back to who am i 
Where am I? Who am I talking to? What's my emotional state? All right. If I hear those things coming across, um, I'm with you. Do you actually spend, uh, Thomas also asked, do you actually spend much time listening to the demos? And how about how long do you listen to any one demo? Well, you did. Sort of, you did. Well, you talked you about auditions a little and bit stuff. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Really, but for demos, like, it could it be it varies. two seconds. Yep. Or it could it be could 30 be. seconds it could if you're be. enthralled. Something yep. like that. It can be. <laughs> a lot of times it'll, it'll, it's a very quick, either a very quick yes or no. And it's not always just listening to five seconds of a demo doesn't mean that that I don't like it. It may be like, oh, that's perfect. That can happen in five seconds too. Wow. Um, it's Sold. usually the yes or no's come really quickly. It's the, those folks yeah. with the interesting, with the, the unique perspectives, the yeah. folks that I'm like, hmm, <laughs> let me give this a few more. Hmm, that's really interesting. Okay. Uh, so. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, well, sure. All that right. was for the four questions? Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Good. Mixed, All right. <laughs> remixed, remixed in a way. Editing on the fly. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, Scott Brick says, you still look awesome in spray paint, pal. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Inside joke. Yes. Uh, Gerard McGuire asks, is all casting done via agents and is it necessary to have an agent and to be union to get a good video game gig? Yes. There you go. Good being the underline, I'd, I'd say uh -huh. you'd have to unline. a good video game gig. Yeah. There are non-union low budget video games, I'm sure, being produced out there. There are. There are. <laughs> and we've gone after them. I mean, we're, yeah. we're trying and, and, and we partnered with them. I mean, uh, that's part of the outreach is to be in touch with talented folks who are currently non-union and to say, Hey, listen, you're ready to, you're ready to come over and you can keep to provide contracts that allow them to keep working on the games they're working on. Right. Yeah. Our low budget contract um, provides a two hour minimum, um, which is really common. We discovered when we talked to non-union and FICOR actors and discovered what they were making. And we designed a contract that provided that same level of compensation, but with union um, compensation. So you get health insurance, you get a nice pension when you get too old to work. All right. Nate Coffin. Yeah. He says, on average, do you feel like video game scripts are lacking when you compare them to scripts in other genres or industries? How's the writing in video games? How's that coming? Better and better. Yeah. Better and better. Yeah. I've been really, really lucky, really fortunate to work on games that have really, really good writing. Um, it's particularly the Final Fantasy, uh, which I just finished, was a, a translation. Um, Dan Inouye and Matt Furta and their team of translators just did a beautiful job of localizing what was originally written in Japanese to make it feel like an English language game so really grateful to them uh, even a game like skylanders um which is a lot of silly dialogue for the characters um had some really clever writing had some really neat little ways to to do stuff um but to the larger point telling a story in a two hour or a 90 minute format is something that we've been doing for a hundred years um, telling a compelling story over a 10 to 50 hour uh, format is a little is a little newer. It's a little bit, it doesn't have quite the history. So I think the video game industry is still figuring out how to do this. And I think they're getting better and better at it. I witnessed like, if you haven't taken a look at the um, God of War, the new game that's coming out, it is the first 15 minutes are just stunning. Uh, and the performances in particular um, are really beautiful. It draws you in to it draws really play you in. the game. And, and the technical aspect of it, it's shot like it's one camera. Hmm. It's oh, wow. one continuous shot for the whole game. And the wow. camera just keeps, there's no cuts, there's no loading screens, there's no nothing. Wow. I don't know how they did it, but Corey Barlog, who's the director on that game, uh, and who I got was fortunate enough to work with on God of War 2, um, just did a beautiful, beautiful job. When you say 15 minutes, is that a 15 minute uh, cinematic thing that before the gameplay actually starts, or are you talking about the gameplay itself? It starts with a shot of Kratos standing next to a tree, which he then puts in a kayak and takes to his son, who is going in and he talks to his his wife. Yeah, and then they go off on a trek, and it's like hunt the deer, kid. Yeah, 
Um, and he does, and he misses the deer, and then they come on some demons, and it's gameplay. Wow. And it never, the camera never cuts. There, it, I, I, I've been out of the gaming loop it for is so long. Seamless. I used to play like Half Life and these older, yeah. and then you'd see this amazing cinematic, and it looked incredible because right. they threw everything they had at right. it. Then the gameplay would start, and it's like, <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> yeah. But that's, those, those yeah. days are gone now, right? I mean, the Good cinematic flows right that into was the, the thing that that god of war the original did which was trying to eliminate loading screens yeah was this idea of cut scenes that the game can be loading while there's a scene playing so that it should feel it's like a seamless invisible. and mm. now they've got it to a point where it feels like a seamless shot that's wow. awesome. It's, that it's, might make me go buy a game. That's what just, I'm saying. It sold a bajillion copies, and I and again, I didn't I didn't work on this one, wow. but it's it's beautiful, beautiful. Cool. Good to know. Tracy Reynolds asks when she's not talking to her kids uh, when auditioning commercial <laughs> demos. What catches your attention and keeps you listening longer? Well known national products and businesses, or unknown local products and businesses. Neither. It's <laughs> it's the the approach. It, it really again. It doesn't matter the product itself. I mean, it's all you know. It's thrilling, I suppose. I mean, I opened my my demo with Orbit Gum and Sarah Silverman. Um, okay. I also like my read. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works. But that's, so that, that, that's real. That's real content. Yeah. In other words, it's R E E L because it's R E A L. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all stuff that I actually did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So that's fun. But yeah, putting it on your reel again, it comes back to that's kind of again majoring in the minors, which is you know what product should I endorse? Well, I tell you what, on my commercial demo, I think there's still some stuff on there. I literally had taken a commercial demo class, and I was sitting at home uh, on the toilet with a copy of Wired Magazine, and there was a Lexus ad. And I was like, that's pretty good copy. And then I flipped the page and there was an IBM ad. I was like, that's pretty good copy. And I and I got like three or four pieces of copy out of the Wired Magazine that I was just sitting there with. And the other thing I used to do, and this is another secret of mine, was I love, I realized, I, A, I love golf, and B, when I was watching golf, I started to realize that my voice was was close to what I was hearing from. You have a very golf like voice. The luxury, yeah. the luxury yeah. car, the financial services, mm -hmm. um, all that sort of stuff was sort of suited my my timber. So I started copying them. I just started when I would watch golf in the you know on a right. su Saturday or Sunday afternoon. I would just repeat whatever was being said in those. And when I finally got that Scott Trade account. And it showed on the open, right? You know, in Britain, <laughs> uh, the, the British Open. I just thought I did it. There you go. You know, it was a huge dream come true. It's like hitting the green after so, when a two when a five iron. Right. You know, you know. know where you fit. No, again, to to know what type. Where do I? Where does my voice best fit? And the luxury cars and the upscale IBM and I guess gum too. From well, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank thank goodness for that. Um. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. One last question here. We'll get the last one in from yeah. Jason. Jason Brockman. This is an interesting one. Yeah. But how do you uh, deal with moral implications of advertising? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to figure out the angle he's coming at. I think here. I know what he means. Yeah. Um, I is it the truth in advertising part that he means by moral? Or I think moral the in terms of. I mean, for moral? for me personally, um, there are products that I won't endorse. Yeah. Just because of my own beliefs. There are times yeah. when I've turned down auditions for certain products. Yeah. Um, that I just don't feel are um that I don't want to I don't want to lend myself to promoting. But sure. um so, you know, there 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 aren't a lot of them. I guess I don't know what that says about me morally. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there are, you know, I, I do there there is a there is a line that I that I won't cross. Uh, and I I mean I was thinking of it uh, I, that that makes sense and I was thinking of it from another angle which is tr the whole, you know, truth in advertising thing when you're it's an ad for a product that you like but you don't think the ad is completely truthful. 
That's another kind of moral dilemma. Is that something you've come across? And you just say, well, you know, I'm going to sell it anyway. Clear and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, that's a question for each, for each individual because yeah. you do have to feed your family. Yeah. And when you get to a certain level, you can start to have you can start to employ those things. Um, I think it's really difficult early in, in a, in one's career to say no. Um, and again, there were certain things that I have said no to uh, throughout my career. Um, but it's very interesting to see when you see, which I joke about this with my family and not to get too far off topic, actors who become enormously famous and then suddenly transcend into some sort of um, spiritual realm or, right. you know, so some sort of spokesperson for some movement. And, right. Or they, yeah. they become, and I, I think to myself of like, well, yeah, you can afford to spend your days, right. You know, contemplating whatever it is you want to contemplate yeah. or going to training seminars or, or juicing. And you have, I had a buddy with, <laughs> comes back to golf. Like if he says to me, he's, cause I'm a terrible golfer, but I love the game. And he goes, well, what if you had, if you played golf four times a week, on the weekends competitively. Uh, and then you had a, a trainer for the rest of the week. You had a nutritionist. You had someone who was working you out to, uh, to improve your muscles and your skills. It'll take a couple strokes off your game. Yeah. yeah. You think you'd get into the eighties and the seventies, maybe you'd get down there pretty quick, wouldn't you? And it's the same thing. Like once you get to that level where you can afford to say no. Um, but again, there's a, there's that line that I, that I wouldn't cross. I've, I have, I've done work for armed forces radio. Um, you know, the PSAs that help right. the guys understand how to cash their checks. Right. Um, but I'm, but I, I won't do a, a recruiting ads. Okay. Well, Keith, it has been a humongous pleasure. This is a great honor for me. This is really oh, terrific. I feel we're thrilled to have achievement. you here. There you go. Thanks All for right. helping us break in our new studio setup. Too. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and we look great. All right. Well, we'll be uh, we'll be right back to wrap things up right after this important message. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right. Hey, that was a great conversation. It was. Farley. I knew he was going to be great. He was. It was interesting stuff that I need to know. And if I need to know it, all of you need to know it. And what's nice about, you know, working with uh, on Keith, that was a, we, it was a long-term project. He, we, there was a lot of planning, waiting, figuring things out. So I got to meet with Keith and hang out and talk with him a lot. So great. it was always a pleasure, man. It's all right. Really cool. Uh, next week on this very show, uh, that is May 14th, which is a Monday night, which is when we always do the show, Dan Nachtrab. Or is it Nachtrab? <laughs> Jack, hey. fill us in. My buddy Dan. Dan, Dan the man. Dan, Dan, Dan the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he'll be here. He's, Danny Nock. He's a big guy in narration and promo work. It's, it'll be an interesting conversation oh, about cool. that. May 21st, another promo guy. Harry Dunn will be with us. Oh, wow. Yeah. I also heard that Philip Banks will be with us. <laughs> That's cool. Live from Scotland. Is he going to be streaming in or uh, in, in, in He the will flesh? be live. He will be live with us in Scotland. Oh, far out. That's yes, cool. Wearing his kilt. Up at which three we have in the both morning. seen him wear. He does know what time our show is on. Yeah. You, you do know that, right? Uh, I don't Just think the man it. sleeps, so because right. he's busy ranting about something. Good. Uh, who are our donors <laughs> of the week? Oh man, Andrew Kaufman always he's liking to catch every show now, which is awesome. Tracy H. Reynolds, 
uh, keeping on the scroll here, voiceover dude, who also is dude. known as Cam Cornelius. Cam Cornelius, yes. Eric Aragoni, one of our longtime every episode donors. Thanks, my friend. Um, a collectible collections. That one came in from last week. So that yeah. gets through the list since we right. had our last we show. Thanks, it. everybody. Right. If you want to donate to the show, there's a, the tab is still up there, isn't there? Unless it fell off the edge oh, of the screen, God. hopefully no, it's still uh, on there yeah. somewhere. We got, we got our, our, we have, we're updating the website. So no, it, we, yeah, the no. royal we. The, yes, no, no, no. no. Somebody, the, the who, fine, who is doing it? The p fine people at voiceactorwebsites.com are redoing it. And uh, that's going to be, that's going to be great. You know, it'll look somewhat the same, but much more functional. Better function. Right. Uh, hey, if you need help with your home studio, there are no two better places to go than georgethetech.com and me, Dan Leonard. <laughs> home <laughs> voiceover. I rehearsed that. Thing. I know. Homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, best place to go for, uh, for those types of problems that you're having, or if you're just trying to learn. Uh, you've got your geeky podcast. People listening in, you got lots of subscribers for that. I think so. Okay, that's I, what I don't know. You. I just talk. It's one of those few things where I don't have to do any post. I don't have to know what's going on. I just show up once a month and record and do the pro audio suite. Sounds good. It's a fun show. Yeah. Uh, show logs. Jack DeGolia is still writing everything down, although he's going to take some time off. We may need some help. Someone else doing the show notes for a couple of weeks. So if you'd like let to volunteer know. for uh, for that, let us know. Jack will teach you in five minutes how it's done. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got the, we're, we're alive. Yeah, we we're are. alive now. Right now, you know right this minute. We are alive and we're live, but many of you can't watch it live. We realize that. So if you want to watch it later, it's on VOBS.TV. It's on YouTube, but it's also on a podcast so you can listen to the show if you prefer you can't watch the show for an hour and a half like a lot of people may not be able to just listen in and you'll get a lot of the same great content and you can get it through stitcher uh podbean itunes hopefully soon on spotify working on that one Excellent. and so you'll be able to find us all over the place all righty and show us your booths you know we had to use the hollywood sign tonight because we haven't used it in a while but, uh, you know, we want to see what your booths look like. Take the picture in landscape. Otherwise, it's just sitting in the middle of our, our background here. We want to see what you're doing out there. Maybe we should get a picture of uh, Keith's uh, voiceover lounge. We definitely should have that for one of our next shows. Maybe we'll throw that up there next week. It is week. pretty cool looking. All righty. And if you want to be in our studio live here while we do the show on Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and you're in the greater Los Angeles area, write to us at theguysvobs.tv, just like with the pictures you have of your booth, and we'll tell you the secret handshake if you can be here at like quarter to six on a, on a Monday night. Dan just, will put the dogs away, and you can come in. Yeah, the dogs weren't in here tonight. <laughs> they did. Ari doesn't know there's carrots. Uh, let's see that here. Way. That's right. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO to go go voice actor websites.com and J. Michael Collins demos. All righty. Well, we need to thank Marcy for letting us be out here in the garage and uh, uh, Catherine Curden for being a great producer and getting us great guests like Keith Farley, Jack Daniel on chat room duty. Good job there, my hey, friend. Yeah, hey, 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 right. Hey, buddy. All Woo. right. And of course, our floor producer who is going to be tearing her hair out for the rest of the evening, but she did a great job tonight with our Man. new system here. Sumerlino, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, dealing with our new system. Yes, and Jack DeGolia for doing the show notes and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. I was almost going to let the show end without saying thank you to Gerald, Gerald Griffith, Griffith, who in the clutch yeah. was able to get us up to speed with our system. It's called VMix, and he, Gerald is a, is been using it for the last few years for yeah. Bio Atlanta. If you've been there, you've seen what his his production values are, which get better every year. And you've seen it streamed perhaps online. That's what he uses. He knows it well. And he was there for us tonight he to get us, us on the it. air. Yeah. So thanks, Gerald. We really, really appreciate it. Well, that's going to do it for us this particular week on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'll be back next Monday night. We know this is not an easy business. You know, doing the technical stuff, you're all intimidated by it. We're here to help you out. And we're here to have you talk with some of the best people in the business. So join us next Monday night here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO.